Hi everyone! In this video tutorial, I'd like to take a look at flipping the chair. So what I mean by that is I want to take a look at cyclohexane and its chair conformer and see what happens when you go from one version of the chair conformer to another. So now these are two distinct conformers and you do have this equilibrium that happens where they flip in between each other. But sometimes that's an equilibrium that heavily favors one version over the other. And by understanding how and what changes, it'll help us understand why there might be more stability in one chair than the other when they pretty much look the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to first number our carbon. So we have carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And we know that those carbons are all attached to other groups, so they have two substituents attached to them. And those substituents can be placed in two ways, either axial or equatorial. In order to figure out how you work that out, the only thing you need to remember is that on position one in this particular conformer, the axial position points straight up. And then we know that it's going to rotate around in an alternating up-down fashion. So position two, position three, four, five, and six. The other kind of position you can have is an equatorial position. So when you're dealing with equatorial positions, you want to know that there's going to be an opposing thing between axial and equatorial. What I mean is, if axial is up, then equatorial is going to be positioned down. And it's going to be positioned down in kind of an equator, hence equatorial sort of way, where it's hanging out in a tilted angle. Then this one's down, so this one would be up. This is down, up, down, and then up. So now what you want to remember is that these bonds are single bonds, which means that there is rotation around them. It's just that when you're in this cyclic compound, those rotations will have ramifications in terms of the kind of conformer you have. Now, the rotation isn't totally free, meaning that there is going to be some kind of energy barrier that has to be overcome in order for you to be able to actually get from one chair to another. Now, if these were all hydrogens, it's a pretty equitable amount of one chair versus the other. But if you have a really big bulky group, then you could actually have a great preference for one chair over the other. So now before we get into that, let's first understand what happens when you flip the chair. So in this case here, what's happening is you're going to take one end, so I'm going to take this number one, and when you flip it, you essentially pull it down so that this position one here is now going to be moving down. So I take this up and I'm going to move it down. So over here, position one is now facing downward. And that's the first step. So that's why we have two bumps, because there's going to be two steps. One position comes down, and then one position is going to come up. So four was initially pointing down. I pull it up, and now it's placed right here. And then once again, in a clockwise fashion, I can put the rest of my numbers. So that means now what we have to do is think about our substituents that we have. So over here, this is placed in the axial position. And remember, I'm taking one, and I'm going to tilt it down. So I'm not going to flip it all the way down. What I'm going to do is tilt it such that this gets turned until this position here that is axial up will still be up, but now it's going to be equatorial up. So then over here, this is axial down, which means it's going to flip to equatorial, but it'll still maintain its downward shape. On three, we're up, so maintain up, but now we become equatorial. And so you move around again, still in this alternating fashion. So up and then down. Then pretty much exactly the same thing is going to happen with equatorial. If it's equatorial in one chair, it'll become axial in the other. But it's going to maintain its up or down character. So in position one, right, this is going to be turned so that it becomes axial down. So here position one is axial down and then just alternate it around like so. And so now you can see everything that was axial became equatorial. Everything that was equatorial here became axial. But if it was up, it'll remain up. And if it was down, it will remain down. So now let's take a look at an example of how we can actually apply these ideas. OK, so let's take a look at this example. So it says, draw both chair conformers and indicate which is more stable for cis-1-ethyl-4-methyl cyclohexane. So the first thing I want to point out is the fact that this question says cis. So this has really important implications for when you draw. What cis means is you need to make sure the substituents are on the same side. Now the same side means they're both either up or they're both either down. It does not have to do with them being equatorial or axial. So keep that in mind when you're drawing out these structures. 
So over here then we have our 1-ethyl-4-methyl. So the first thing I want to do is number because that'll help me place things. So here on this particular conformer, that's the number one position. And then we have two, three, four, five, and six. And then we're going to place our various substituent locations, axial and equatorial, around it just to make sure we're remembering how we do that. So remember, as long as you know position one, you can figure out the rest. On this position one, that axial position is pointing up and then it alternates from there. And then we know that the equatorial will be the opposite positioning, meaning that this is axial up, so we want equatorial down, and then we alternate again with our structure. So now, based on the way that these are positioned, on position one and position four, these are the two spots I'm gonna consider. So now, I can either put this ethyl on an axial position or I can put it on an equatorial position. And then the same with the methyl. So now if I think about the size of the two of them, if we're just kind of thinking about stability as we draw our initial compound, we're gonna know that ethyl is a larger substituent than methyl is. And we know that the larger it is, the greater the preference it has for where it gets placed. So this one would suffer from steric issues more than the methyl would, which means that we're gonna preferentially place the ethyl first before we even worry about methyl. So given the option, the ethyl would be better off on an equatorial position because that would minimize any of the steric issues it would have with the other substituents on the compound. Remember that this is not drawn to scale and things are squished more on top of each other. So now this is placed on a down position, which means I don't have a choice on four. Because they're cis, I'm gonna have to put my methyl on the four down position, which in this case here is an axial position. Now remember, on all the rest of these positions, I have hydrogens. It's just it gets so messy when you include them all in that most often this would be ignored. But I want you to know that there are other things sitting on there. So now we think about flipping. So remember, when we flip, what we're going to do is take this position and pull it down and then take this position and pull it up. So if I take one and I pull it down, that would put one right here. And if I take four and pull it up, that would put four right there. Now when we flip, what happens is things that are up stay up and things that are down stay down. What changes is if it was axial, it now becomes equatorial. And if it was equatorial, it now becomes axial. So what that means for us is we can see that in this position one, we're in a down position. So we're gonna be down here, but this is equatorial. So now we're gonna switch down to axial. So equatorial here, go axial there. So now we have our CH2, CH3 in this down position. So now we move to four, which has come up here. We're in down position, so we're gonna stay in a down position. The only thing that's gonna change now is it's gonna be down equatorial because it's axial. So I'm gonna go down and then that's the equatorial down position. So there are still all the hydrogens, but just to kind of minimize how much is being drawn, we won't put them all there, but the hydrogens are still on that compound. So the take home is, I take this, I see that it's cis. That means that my substituents are either both up or both down. The next thing I'm gonna take a look at is the bigger bulky group is better off in an equatorial position and we will preferentially place a bulky group. If they were equivalent, I would not have one preference over the other. But because ethyl is bigger than methyl, I preferentially placed it on the equatorial position. Being cis, meaning they both had to be down, that forces the methyl group in the down axial position. When I do the chair flip, I'm gonna take that position one and pull it down. If something is equatorial in this one, it becomes axial in this one. And if it was axial in this case, it becomes equatorial over here. So now the other part of the question is which is more stable? And we've kind of discussed that already. This one here would be the more stable chair because it put the biggest bulky group in that equatorial position, which would be favorable. So meaning that when we have equilibrium, you'd likely have some more of this than that um, because of the fact that we have a minimizing steric hindrance issues on this particular conformer. And so that's how you would work through chair flips and figure out how to position things and how to understand which one would be more stable.